For today's project, I'm actually doing something I've wanted to do for quite some time. I have been eyeballing this nice um, round piece of wood at Hobby Lobby for a while, and um, I finally picked it up and decided I am definitely going to do something with this. I feel like I've been looking at it and looking at it and trying to decide the perfect project for it, and then I walked into another aisle and I saw this really pretty wreath, and I finally finally figured it out. So I'm really excited to show you guys what I'm going to do with these two pieces that I've been eyeballing for about six months now. So I finally got these last week and we are going to be making a little name sign. Um, it's actually a last name initial sign. I'm going to make this for my home um, and I'm really excited about it because it's definitely my style um, and I like that it's going to have some dimension. We can use the little Cricut Joy today. You can actually use any machine that you have. Um, like I said in another video, I'm using the Joy because it's right here and it's so fun, but um, you can use your Maker or um, Explore as well. So um, what we're going to be doing is we are going to be creating a little wreath sign here. So we're going to be using this wooden sign and this wreath. Um, this wreath does come in bare wood. So what I did is I grabbed some spray paint and this is um, the matte robin's egg. I love how this turned out. It's so pretty. And I decided on spray paint because it is um, really hard to get into all of the angles and sides and it would have just been a little bit, um, it would have tested my patience to paint this by hand, let's just say that. So I grabbed some spray paint and I'm sure glad I did. I um, went outside and this took me about three coats. Um, and the only reason it took three coats is just to get the insides, like the, all the ins and then the, the outer parts, but it was it was pretty um, good after two, but three just sealed the deal. So um, that was how I did that. And also it is called um, laser cut vinyl, no, <laughs> vinyl, uh, laser cut vine wreath. Um, and so it's in that wood pile section. It is near the section where you will pick up this um, nice, I think it's 17 and a half inches um, is what I measured. Let me double check for you though while I'm here and it'll probably tell me on the tag as well. Um, yeah, 17 and a half inches, um, this nice big circle piece and um, it also comes in bare wood um, and it is just called a pine round so it's very pretty so the, they had all of their um, wood stuff on sale last week for 40% off so I definitely stocked up on a lot of projects that I've been wanting to do so that is um, the first two things you're gonna need and for this one I used no surprise, you guys know I put this on everything. I used my um, Folk Art Home Decor chalk paint and um, I got the white Adirondack color. I will be honest, I went and stocked up on paint the other day. Did I tell you guys this? Um, I had to go to a couple different stores to find it and when I found it, I got a ton because I, it's my favorite and there was a little bit of a run on it the other day. <laughs> Actually, just one store was out, but anyway. You're also going to need some scissors. You're going to need a weeding tool. Um, a measuring tape will come in handy for measuring our design, a squeegee. We're also going to be using some um, masking transfer tape to put our um, vinyl down. And we're going to be using a hot glue gun. You can do anything you want in terms of adhesive if you find another method that works better for you. But I am definitely going to be using hot glue to attach my wreath and my board together. And then we're also going to be using some vinyl. So I am going to be using this um, Oracle 651 light gray color. I really, really like it. Um, and I think it pairs really, really well in tones with this um, with this wreath and then this nice pop of white. So um, also to mention, um, I just painted the wreath and didn't do anything else with that. And um, this is gonna be an indoor sign. Um, I did um, after, I think I put two coats on, yes, two coats on this. I kind of wanted to have a little bit more of a whitewash look. So I did, I stuck with two coats. Then I used an electric sander just to um, smooth the surface so I'd be ready for vinyl and just to remove any paint strokes. Um, and then also I distressed the edges because you know I love a little distressed look. I think that is it. Always utilize this uh, description box in case I sneak anything else in. You guys know how I am sometimes halfway through the project. I realize I need something and grab it real quick. So if you um, have any questions, let me know but always use that description box to um, see what products I'm using and also make sure you guys are all subscribed I'm super excited last night I worked 
forever in design space on a project that's coming to the channel. It is so cute. Even my husband was like, that is going to be awesome. So, and I ordered a bunch of stuff on Amazon last night to do this project. So make sure you're subscribed. I don't want to say any more because it was just so exciting. Okay, so subscribe. It's going to be fun. Um, and let's hop into a design space. Let's measure the inner, we're going to uh, measure the inner part of this wreath real quick. It's just going to help us when we're sizing our letter. So we're just going to have a single letter in the middle here. And... This is coming in at about eight, and this should be a perfect circle, but um, some of them kind of, it kind of depends on where you measure, if that makes sense. So I'm going to play it safe and just say seven and a half. Um, I think it's easier just to round down one in terms of sizing. I'd rather have something um, be a little bit more on the cautious side instead of way too big. So um, we're going to go with like a seven and a half inner area to work with. So let's pop into design space. I'll show you how I'm going to design this and we will get to bringing this project together. I'm super excited to show you how this turns out. And also I'm super excited to see how it turns out. <laughs> All right, let's get started. Okay, so here we are in design space and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to the shapes box right here and click and I'm going to make a circle that is representative of that innermost um, part of the wreath that we are going to be using to measure our letter. Um, so we decided that we are going to go with 7.5 and I'll just color this white. Now remember, this isn't the actual size of the round. That was at um, 17 and a half inches. So this is just the innermost measurements of that inside of the wreath that we were measuring before we switched over. So now what we're gonna do is we are going to just place a single letter. So you would place the letter for your last name. Um, the last uh, letter for my name is D. So I'll just go over here to the text box and I will type in D. And then what I will do is I can go over here to the font box and this is how we'll change our font. So I'll go in here, you can just browse and scroll and did you guys notice that Cricut has um, fixed the scrolling issue in the um, text the text area? Do you guys remember if you've been Cricuting for a long time, I'll show you example. Um, so say we go down here and we click base camp and we think, mm, that's really cute, but I don't really love it. Actually, that is really cute, <laughs> and I kind of do love it. Um, that's really nice. Okay, so, but if you decided that you didn't like it, if you come back here, Cricut kind of, it scrolls back to where you left off. If you are new to Cricut, what used to happen is you'd have to start right back at the beginning and scroll all the way through, and it was just maddening. We've been wanting that change for a while. So I noticed that the other day. I thought I'd mention that. If you guys haven't noticed it yet, Cricut fixed that, and um, it's making things a lot easier. You can also go up here and search if you know the exact name. Um, I am going to be using this Kate ABC's Baby Girl. I use this quite often. I really like this font. Um, come on, update. I feel like um, Design Space has been really tired the last 24 hours. <laughs> Maybe it's me too, but um, there we go. Okay, so this is the font I'm going to be using. I like how traditional it is. Um, I kind of went back and forth between doing a um, more flowy script font or um, a block font, but I decided to go with like a nice steady blocks font because I thought it would pair well with the vine. I think the vine kind of has all of the movement and the flow with it. And I think this, um, pairs really well with it because it kind of evens it out and just makes everything, um, stand alone a little bit better while being super cohesive. Okay. I hope that makes sense, but that's just kind of what goes through my mind when I'm, um, designing that. So now what we're going to do is we can, um, color this gray just to get a visual of what we're going to be doing and I think this looks really nice. Another reason I really like this font and it's going to also depend on what letter you're using but I liked how this was pretty square in nature. Um, if you'll look it's about 3.8 by 3.6. I'll probably size it up to about almost four. So I like how it's a little bit square in nature because I think it will, it kind of gives like a nice even look around. Um, I think it'll fit really pretty inside of the um, wreath and just kind of look more intentional. So I, that is just kind of my mindset on picking a font for this particular project. So now what I can do is I can go ahead and I can hide this circle because I don't need it. I was just making sure that I used it for reference purposes. Um, and I think this is exactly where I want to go. I'm just going to be in the background, double check my measurement on my sign. And D is, or D, a four inches is looking pretty good. I might go for 
and a quarter. Let's do that. I think that's going to look really nice. Okay, 4.25 by 4. Yeah, I think that that is perfect. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I am going to cut this out. Again, let's hide the circle. Uh, when it was just for measuring and reference purposes, purely visual. And so we'll just go over to this eyeball right here and hide. Now, if you ever see this little icon when you're working with your joy, it's just if you kind of hover over it or click it, it's saying that... Um, this image, so the circle part, is way too big. So it's saying it's too large, reduce it to 4.5 um, by 48 or less. So it's just saying that the joy, um, as you know, cuts a little bit more in the small scale of things, so this would be too big to cut out. No worries, because we're not using it anyway, but there's no alert on this one. We are in the right size. I do have my joy um, selected. Again, you can use any machine, so make sure you just select which one you're using. And I will go over here to make it. So now what it's going to ask is how are we going to um, be putting our vinyl into the machine? So you can use Smart Bite Vinyl if you'd like, and you can just auto load it without a mat. Or if you want to use some other mat um, or other material that you have or scrap material, you can do an on the mat project. And again, it reminds you it's for any material. Again, I'm using the Oracle 651 vinyl, so I'm going to do on the mat and I'll click done. Now it's just gonna put it on, show me how it's gonna be placed on the mat, which is perfect. I love how it's gonna be using a lot of space there. Um, and now it's showing me, it's just about at four and a quarter, four and a half I'll, um, for vinyl, so I'll know how to measure my vinyl for this project. And I can go ahead and hit continue. Now it's just gonna locate my joy via Bluetooth. Everybody's waking up this morning. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to browse my materials. Let's see, let's see if we can find it in popular. We are just gonna be using regular vinyl. We'll browse for it. So we are just gonna be using vinyl. And let's see here. We, oh, I have started, oh goodness, I'm so tired this morning, I'm sorry guys. But actually this was a good um, little tutorial. Anyway, if you don't um, have something favorited already, you can always go in here and look for it. Once you find something you like and you know it's a material you use over and over again, you can start it. I have already, and look you guys, it was here all the time. Oh, more coffee, I need more coffee today. Okay, so premium vinyl is what we're going to be using for the setting. Um, the default pressure is just fine. We'll go ahead and load our little um, Cricut Joy mat and we will get to loading it into the Joy and get everything cut and we'll get this all put together. Okay, so I actually have a piece of scrap so I don't need to cut into this yet. I grabbed this yesterday at um, Michael's really quick just because I wasn't quite sure if I had enough for this project. So, yay, we can just use this. So I'm just gonna cut this um, down a little bit. Let's see here. So we'll just cut it down and I'm entering coffee onto the scene because I think I'm a little tired this morning. How about everybody else? See, it's Sunday today. A little bit, a little bit sleepy. Okay, hopefully I got the width right on that. Did I get the width right? Let me double check my design here. Four by four, okay. It's looking good. Okay, so we'll just place that here. Um, now this little mat is so great because it allows you to use material that you already have if you don't necessarily want to use smart material for a particular project. Um, and this kind of sealed the deal for me when purchasing the Joy because um, I already have invested in a lot of vinyl for my maker and so I wanted to make sure that I could still use um, some of the materials that I already have to um, with this little machine. So. Everything is already on there. This little green mat does come with the joy, so I was really happy about that. And so now we'll just get everything loaded. So it's an auto load machine. You'll just press the little um, mat against the wheels and it'll pull it in, just like that. And now it's just gonna measure and make sure we have enough uh, material. It's also gonna make sure that the mat is aligned. So it's a smart little machine and it really double checks you, especially mamas early in the morning who have still um, to drink all their coffee.
Okay, the go button on my device. So again, I'm working on a computer. So your all of your um, buttons will be on your device and you'll click and navigate um, all of your directions there. So that's gonna pull in and that's going to get to cutting. Okay, so now we'll unload our mat and everything is done. Looks really good. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this off of the mat and we will just weed this out. I have a little bit of extra on the side, so I'll just save that because I'm always in need of little pieces for projects. So that will be perfect. And I um, went ahead and I um, started preheating my hot glue. So let's go ahead and get this all weeded out. This is going to be super simple in terms of weeding. We just have a surrounding edge and a middle piece. If you guys have a chance, let me know um, what glue gun you guys like because mine is, it seems like it just sits here and drips out hot glue and it's a little bit messy. I, I don't believe it should do that because my mine in the past haven't done that. Um, so let me know what, if you guys have um, one that you recommend that you really like because I feel like I'm going to be shopping for one very quickly. Um, because that's just a little bit irritating. So now what we'll do is we will leave this to the side. This is what the um, little text looked like. And again, um, I think it's gonna look really nice here. How pretty, I love it. It looks so, so nice. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I am going to um, glue this vine to the center of the sport. So now what, um, do you notice how when I put like more of a traditional and simple um, font on this that it just pairs a little bit better with all of the flowy. It kind of lets everything um, have their purpose and stand alone. I feel like this um, wreath part has, you know, the movement and it's just a little bit more flowy in nature. And then to contrast, this has just a very traditional clean line look to it. So I just think that they pair really, really nicely together. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this little guy and we are going to, yep, it's, I can tell that it's ready because it starts dripping glue onto my table. So at least I know when it's ready. So I'm going to flip this over and I'm just going to start applying a little bit of glue fairly quickly um, because I want to get it laid down quickly. So I'll start applying some and then we'll lay it down and keep applying the rest. So I'll just start right here and just start applying some glue. And I'm kind of going every other in terms of um, leaves. Okay. Quickly laying that down while getting everything centered. That is really doing a nice job. Did I get that? all centered. Yay. Okay. Okay. So where did I leave off here is the question. Went really quick with that. Okay. So it is, it is really on there, you guys. Um, it, I think this was a good choice. So I'm just going to kind of pull up, add a little and push down and then pull up again. I'm going kind of every other, add a little and lay down. And then I'll do an inner one. Okay. Here. Okay, this is looking really good. This is down. I like this. Um, I'm liking this idea for hot glue. So if you have another adhesive method, totally feel free to do whatever you wish. But this is, full disclosure, working super nice. So 
Just going to make sure everything got laid down. That is on there. Perfect. So, just kind of got a little on the side here. But for the most part, that laid down very nice, very clean. Let me just get my little... You can also use a hair dryer if you find that you have a lot of these little stringies um, all around because it works really good. It just kind of melts that glue back and um, you can pull it up real quick. All right. Perfect. Ooh, I am loving how this is coming together. I love this um, color blue. So my husband, he drove me to the craft store yesterday um, and I just said, we had to do a pick up a bunch of, you know, we went to a variety of stores to pick up some online orders yesterday. Um, so he let me run in real quick and I ran to the paint aisle real quick and um, came back with my paint and a couple other things because you can't just run into Michael's for paint. Of course, I found myself like in the Easter aisle and then I found myself, where else? Vinyl. Okay, yeah, of course. No, no need to explain that I found myself in the vinyl aisle. Um, so anyway, I came back outside with my paint and he said, that is totally the color I thought you would get. <laughs> he said it was either white or it was like a nice... Um, what is this even called? Well, it's called Robin's Egg, but almost kind of like a, a nice sea foam or teal, but he knows me so well, I guess. <laughs> okay, so now what I'm going to do is, I don't know if you can really tell on camera, there is a little bit of a divot in the wood here, um, which is fine. It's not hurting anything, but since I'm going to be putting something right here, I'm going to try to align it so that it covers that little spot because it's a little bit of an eyesore for me, which that is going to work perfectly. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take some masking transfer tape and I'm going to cut a piece off. I'm curious about what everybody else is working on. Are you guys working on spring crafts or are you working on Easter crafts or neither? What are you guys doing? What's going on in everybody else's craft table? I feel like mine is kind of full of spring and ooh, that project that's coming up that I teased you about. That one's going to be super fun. Now I just have to be patient and wait for the materials to arrive. That's the hardest part. I kind of have everything designed, but now I just have to wait for... I'll probably be sitting on the sidewalk when my Amazon delivery arrives. <laughs> I kind of owe my, my delivery man a Christmas card at this point because he brings a lot of deliveries to our house lately. Okay. So now that is all scraped down with the squeegee. The reason you do this is just to make sure that that vinyl applies to the transfer tape. That way it's easy to pull off. Um, and so you're just going to flip it over and start pulling. Okay. And now we can just start laying it down. So hopefully, wish me luck. I'm going to try to, I don't know if you can see it, but in person it's a little bit more prominent. I'm going to try to cover that as best I can. Is that going to cover that way? Yeah, it should. Okay, let me look in terms of centering how, it might not actually, if it wants to lay down. Let me try the other way. And really it doesn't matter if it doesn't because it's not going to be that noticeable, but, oh, that might be better. Okay, so I'm just going to try to lay down that lightly because I want to measure and see where I'm at here. I'm at about two inches by one and a half by two by looking pretty good though. I might just let it let it be. It's also kind of hard because it's hard to measure which one to which one. So you might really find yourself relying more on your eye than anything else. Your eye though, um, what did my husband tell me? It is good up to like, a, it's accurate at least up to something like really, really like a quarter of an inch. Is that right? Or a half an inch? which I totally believe because I kind of feel like I rely on my eye a lot and then I grab my measuring tape and I was pretty close. Okay, two, did I even move that to, I think I'm gonna stick right here. Two and just about two, okay. 
All right, I'm gonna say right there because that's looking really good to me. So I'm just going to, let's go with just my fingers first and just kind of make sure everything lays down. Now I'll take my scraping tool and just, I became a firm believer of this scraper tool. I used to use just the Cricut one and I had the, you know, the basic size and then the extra large size. And then I grabbed this from 651vinyl.com when I was placing an order. I thought, oh, I'll just grab that. Um, super cheap. And I tr when I tried it for the first time, I think I even tried it on video and you guys probably noticed that. I was like, oh my goodness, this is amazing. So um, it is, it's so awesome. It's flexible enough, but sturdy enough, if that makes sense. So if you guys do an order through them, snag one of those in your cart because you will not regret it. Oh, that looks so nice and no bubbles. And okay, triple win. It looks very centered to my eye. Um, it covered that little divot, hooray. And then, um, yeah, there's no bubbles in that. So that looks nice. I like, um, this is, has a little bit more of a glossy finish and um, I like that it almost looks like paint. So it looks super, super pretty. I'm very, very happy with how this turned out. Very fun. Okay, so that is the final project. So if you guys have been looking at this um, circular round at Hobby Lobby, um, give this idea a try. And this would make a really pretty gift for someone, don't you think? So now um, I asked my husband last night as we were sanding this, um, if he would add those little picture hanging clasps to the back, because I do intend on hanging this on the wall. So he said, yep, I will do that once you're done. So he's going to add a little um, picture hanger or two, probably two to the back and get this hung in our home for us. I really like how this turned out. And I love that when I see it, I know that I made it myself. There's a lot of pride that comes with that. Okay, if you have any questions, um, make sure you let me know. Um, also, I'm going to link this craft mat once again. I did a video a couple days on it, uh, a, a days ago on it, um, but yesterday I got a lot of questions about it again. So um, some people have still haven't found the video, so I'll make sure if you're new to my channel right now and you're curious about um, this craft mat, I did make it myself, so I'll link that up here. That way you guys can see um, how to do that yourself too. All right, everyone, if you enjoyed this, please give this video a thumbs up. I would love that. And make sure you're all subscribed because some fun things are coming to the craft table. And really, I feel like I'm in this state. I think it's the changing of seasons, but um, usually that happens to me when the weather kind of changes. I get a lot of new, fresh inspiration. So a lot of beautiful things are coming to the table. All right, everyone, enjoy the rest of your weekend, and I'll see you in the next video.